I grew up loving pizza. In fact, my entire family loved pizza so much that we built a wood-fired pizza oven in our backyard and we would hold these huge events where sometimes we would cook as many as 70 pizzas for all of the guests. Now there are quite a few steps that go into prepping a pizza. You have to stretch the dough, then you have to dock the dough, which means you poke holes in it to make sure there are no air bubbles. Then you put down the sauce, you put down the cheese, the toppings, and then you would deliver it to the oven to be cooked. It was actually quite a bit of work to do all of this, especially when you're doing it over and over and over again for 70 pizzas. Luckily, I never had to do all of this on my own though. I would work with my mom, our best family friend, and a lot of my siblings, and we would create a type of assembly line to be able to pump out more pizzas. So most of the time, my only job was to stretch the dough, and I spent so much time doing this one task that I actually got pretty good at it, and I started to toss the dough in the air like they do in the movies. So why do I tell you this story? Well, this is actually the perfect example of how an agency runs. As a freelancer or a solopreneur, you basically are handling every step of the process by yourself. You're making the whole pizza all by yourself. And so you're going task to task to task, and it can get really, really time consuming. You have to find the client, you have to sign the client, do all the paperwork, the invoicing, the discovery call, the design, the communication, the development. You have to launch the site, you have to do support. There are so many steps that go into being a freelance web designer that it can be a nightmare to do it all by yourself. Now, if you build a team around you, then you only have to focus on one or two parts of the whole process, and you can get really good at those things. So for me, I did start out as a freelancer. I was all by myself doing everything, but as I've built the team around me, now really my only role is to find clients. I do all of the marketing and the sales. And because of this, I've been able to get pretty darn good at it. Running my agency this way has allowed me to make way more money and also get rid of the tasks that I don't particularly enjoy. And probably the best part of all of this is the people that I've hired around me are way better at their tasks than I ever was. So my clients are getting way better work, I'm making more money, and everybody's happy. So in the next few minutes of this video, I'm gonna walk you through every single step of this entire process. I'm gonna teach you how to build an agency, how to hire the right people, how to create this assembly line that works smoothly so you can make more money and focus in on the tasks that you like to do. And at the end of this video, you're gonna have all of the resources that you need to make it happen. Now, the first step is you have to understand web design, right? And I'm assuming that you already do if you're wanting to start a web design agency. If you don't, that's definitely going to be step one. But step two is you have to learn every step of the process first. And this has probably already happened if you've been a solo freelancer, right? You understand all that goes into sales and paperwork and design and client communication. And this is gonna be really, really helpful once you start hiring team members because the better you understand all of these steps, the better you're going to be at overseeing them, doing quality control, and making sure that everybody is filling those roles to the best of their ability. Now the third step, and probably the most important, is you have to know how to find clients because you, as the agency owner, it's your job to feed your team. The last thing you want is to build a big team of talented web designers and then not have any clients to keep them busy. You're gonna end up losing money. So you have to find a consistent and proven process to find these new clients. Now, if you're worried about being able to get enough clients to feed your team, don't worry because you have to remember that even if you're not where you wanna be right now, the more people you hire, they're gonna take tasks away from you and off your plate and you're gonna have even more time and energy and focus to market your services and land new clients. But this is definitely the most important part. If you don't have any clients, running an agency is gonna be a massive waste of money. So down in the description, I've added a list of all of the videos that I've made on how to find clients. And these are gonna be a really great place to start so you can get more effective at landing new projects. Now the next step is you need to hire your first team member. And this first hire should come when you're about at 80% capacity. You don't wanna wait until you're too busy or too overwhelmed so you don't even have enough time to find somebody to fill that role. So when you reach about 80% capacity, start looking for somebody to bring onto your team. Now, you need to understand that when you do make this first hire, you're probably gonna take a hit financially, meaning you're gonna be making less money because you're gonna hire somebody, you're gonna have to pay them, and you're probably not gonna find a ton of projects right off the bat. But this is gonna be really essential 
in your growth as an agency, sometimes you need to take one step back to take two steps forward. And so when you make this first hire, what you're gonna wanna do is hire for the role that you hate the most and also the one that takes up the most time. By doing this, you're going to remove a lot of things from your plate and then again, you'll be able to focus on the most important parts of running your business. So my first hire was a web designer. My second hire was a project manager and this was a great way for me to do it to get those things off my plate. Now the next step is you need to get organized. You're not a one man show anymore and so you can't just wing it. You need to start outlining your processes step by step and every task that goes into those. This is gonna help you stay organized and be able to delegate effectively and tell your new team member, here's exactly what you need to do and here's how you need to do it. So for my team, we do a lot of our organization within Slack. Um, we probably even use Slack more than we should, but I also know I have my project manager that uses Notion to keep everything organized. So this is gonna be really, really important for you moving forward because you wanna make sure that nothing falls in the cracks when you are passing things from team member to team member. The next step is you need to keep sales as your number one focus. I've seen this far too many times where people try to scale their business and the first person they hire is a salesperson. And I've rarely seen this work or be effective because nobody knows how to sell your service or your business as well as you do. And so you need to take on this as your primary role. You should always be the number one salesperson for your business. And so your first hire should be designers, developers, project managers, content creators, whatever that looks like. But as long as you can, you need to stay in the driver's seat when it comes to sales to make sure that you can keep your pipeline full. Now, this might not sound appealing to you. And if it doesn't, I understand. For some people like me, it's something that you really enjoy. But if it's not, you need to decide, hey, is this worth it to me to build an agency knowing that I'm going to have to move more into a sales and marketing role? If not, you might wanna consider just staying a freelancer so you can focus more on design because the bigger your agency gets, the less design you're going to do. Now, the next step is you need to put a really big focus on growing your network and your portfolio. As you hire more team members, you're gonna be able to pump out more projects at a higher rate, meaning that your portfolio is gonna grow a lot quicker, you're gonna have more clients under your belt, and your chances of getting seen or getting referred are gonna be much, much higher. This is one thing that I love about the agency model is it just accelerates every aspect of your business. You're gonna have more sites out there, more clients out there, more work to show, and at the end of the day, this is just going to bring you in even more work. The next step is quality control, and this is something that every single business owner has to go through because you start scaling, you start bringing on new team members, and before you know it, you get a complaint or maybe two complaints about the quality of the work. And you have to take a step back and say, okay, what are we doing wrong? And what do I need to do to make sure that every step of the process is getting done correctly? So you can solve this quality control issue in two ways. Number one, and probably the most effective is don't go cheap when you're hiring people. Hire good people. You're going to pay a premium but you're gonna have a much better chance of having people in these roles that are gonna do a good job. You don't have to babysit them. You're not gonna have to double check their work. And so it's going to be a good investment. The second way that you can solve this quality control issue is put this as a task or a responsibility on someone in your team. For me, I delegate this to my project manager. So every step of the process, he's doing all of the quality control. He's double checking everybody's work and giving critique and feedback just to make sure that everybody's on their A game all the time. So remember, as you scale, you don't wanna lose quality. If anything, the quality should go up as you bring on more and more talent. Now, this next step is you need to step in and take on the mantle of agency owner. You're no longer a designer. You're not a freelancer. You are a business owner, an agency owner, a leader, and you need to step into this role and do everything that you can to become a great leader. For me, this isn't necessarily something that came easy at first, and so I've had to dedicate time and money to books and courses and mentors, and I've had to do everything possible to learn how to become a good leader. And I'm still a long ways from getting there. There's a lot that I have to learn, but this is something that you need to expect of yourself that you're going to step into that role and you're going to lead your team because they expect that from you. They need that. They need somebody that's steering the ship, 
telling them where to go, what to do, is providing clients and feeding the team. And if you can do this, you're gonna have an awesome team of experts and specialists that trust you and love to work with you. All right, so that's it for this video. If you wanna learn more about how to grow a successful agency, click up here in this corner. If you wanna learn more about how I find web design projects and clients, you can click up here in this corner. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.